the function f of x equals x to the fourth minus six x to the second. Okay. From the instruction here, what we have to find, we're gonna have to find the local max local min using the first derivative test or actually this term, or we're gonna do both just to see if they're gonna come out the same way. And then um, we'll use the following part, okay? For this one, no matter what the function type you're gonna work on, you're gonna have to find the derivative, okay? So we're gonna find the a prime, and this is the polynomial, which is not too bad. So x to the fourth minus six x squared, we have four, x to the third minus 12x for the first derivative, okay? And the other one, the second derivative, just set it aside because we're gonna use the first and the second derivative test to identify local max, local min. So f double prime gonna be 12x squared minus 12, okay? To use the first derivative test, well, I'm gonna do like, not in the right order yet, because on the way to find the, the, the local max, local mean, we can identify the interval of increase, decrease, concave up, concave down. So we can work on B and C before, even before we get to the summary of the first and the second derivative test, okay? So from the first derivative, remember the slope, the slope is a F prime, right? We can use the derivative to identify the interval of increase, decrease. Um, find the critical point. And this is the polynomial function. So we just use the case at f prime equals zero. So four x to the third minus 12 x equals zero and solve the algebraic problem, okay? Common factor four and x. And then in parentheses, we have x squared minus three. Is that right? Yes. So x squared minus three equals zero and multiplied by the four x. So with this, as you see, we have x equals zero from the four x factor and x squared minus three will give you x equals square root three x equals negative square root three. I'm gonna get two numbers, square root three, negative square root three. And since this one is a polynomial function, the domain is all real numbers or infinite, negative infinity to positive infinity. So no restriction. So any number could be used as the input of this polynomial function. Okay, since we have all the x numbers here, we're gonna, draw the real number line to identify the interval of increase, decrease. Real number line. This is a real number line for the F prime. Locate all three critical numbers here. Zero, the negative square root three, zero, and then square root three. There are different ways to, to locate the plus minus sign of F prime. So what I would do, um, this is maybe taking too long for um, as what you think, but it's very concrete. So since f prime is in the form of the 4x multiplied by x squared minus 3, okay? x squared minus 3, which is from, I'm going to rewrite it as x minus square root three and x plus square root three, okay? So I broke it down into the like small factors, the like four x, x minus square root three, x plus square root three. Why would I do this way? Because I'm gonna use each critical number as a reference point. For example, the four x, the four x, the zero of this is a zero, right? At this portion, at this portion. So basically we have four sub intervals. For this, for the four X, anything greater than zero, you get the side positive. I use zero as a reference point right now. The right hand side of zero, I have plus side for the four X factor. The left hand side of the zero, I have negative side. Okay. And then the next one, the X minus square root three. 
my reference point for this factor is square root three because it's going to make this factor to be zero. The greater number than square root three, I have plus sign for this factor. The left hand side, I have negative sign, negative sign, negative sign. Another factor, x plus square root three. My reference point is negative square root three now. Okay, any number greater than negative square root three will make that factor to be positive. The left side of that number or the lower number than negative square root three, it will give me negative sign. So then what I'm going to find, I'm finding the sign of my of the F prime, which is the product of these three factors. Okay, these three factors. I just look at the sign positive times positive times positive. So the left, the right, the right end is gonna be a plus sign here. And then is that plus sign? Yes. And then the next one, positive times negative times positive. The second on the right side of the line here will give me a negative sign. Okay. And the next one on the left here, negative times negative times positive. I have plus sign for the first derivative. And similar way for the left end, I have the product of these three negative sign as negative. So now I have positive, negative, positive, negative interval of the F prime. Then I'm gonna use this to, to summarize it as the interval, the intervals of increase. Increase means my F prime is greater than zero, right? The plus sign. So gonna be from square root three to infinity, or we can take from the left end. So which is from negative square root three to zero has to be open interval, okay? Because at those points, the critical number, the F prime is zero. So negative square root three zero, that's the first intervals of increase. And the next one, gonna be square root three to infinity. And then the interval of decrease. This case, the F prime less than zero or slope negative. Slope negative, the left end, which is negative infinity to negative square root three. And then the second interval of, increase, of decrease is from zero to square root three. Okay, that's the way to answer and use the first derivative. All right, now we're gonna use a question so far. No, All right. for the second derivative, now we're gonna find the possible inflection point. Some textbook, they use the term hypercritical. Okay, hypercritical. I'm gonna put it as as based on this book, they use the term possible, possible inflection point. Okay, possible. And again, note that some, some textbooks said hypercritical. It's critical on top of the critical. I guess that's how it comes from. So again, this is a polynomial. We look at the case that the F double prime equals zero or solve for x when 12 x squared minus 12. Okay, that's nice. We have many 12s here. So 12 times x squared minus one equals zero. Factor completely. Algebra skill can be used heavily in this section. Okay, now we have two factors. 12 is non-zero number. Don't get lost using the 12 as one of the critical value. We have x equals one and x equals negative one as possible critical points. Use the real number line again. This time it's gonna be the second derivative value. Locate those two numbers, negative one and positive one. And I would use the same way since the 12 is already positive number, right? So we don't have to worry about the 12. So we look for the sign of the factor x minus one and the factor x plus one.
for the x minus 1, my reference point is at 1. The right hand side or the right side of the value 1, the side of this is going to be positive. The left is going to be negative, negative. For the factor x plus 1, my reference point is negative 1. So then the right side of the value negative 1 is going to be positive. The left side is negative. And then use the product of these two signs as the sign of the f double prime. So we have plus sign here. We have minus sign here. We have plus sign here. Okay. The f double prime positive. I'm happy. So concave up, concave up. Not happy when negative, concave down. And then I summarize this as the interval of concave up, up going to be negative infinity, negative one, and one to infinity. And the other one, the interval of concave down going to be the middle one, which is negative one comma one.